Good morning traders. So still using the Bill Williams theory. Uh, how do we trade the DAX today? Now I've left the yesterday's levels in that I drew uh, just to showcase uh, the fact that we got right into the zone and then the buyer stepped off. Okay, so remember how we got that zone? Let's just swing to the left. You can see it was a gap close as well as all these. So, so there was the first inside tail and then I picked up on this inside tail which was the closest one to the gap. Okay, so if you had your long order in there, you would have had a pretty pretty nice trade of around 360 points. Okay, so now the big question is, and um, was these two dips down an attempt to come and close this gap? So first time, second time, third time lucky. Okay, remember I'm very, very uh, confident on my story of threes. And uh, you'll see I do have a video in my playlist on the story of threes, but it's always the case. It's three attempts at a level. It's three attempts to turn around. You know, we use three moving averages to define where we're going. Okay, so and whenever you see um, three tails like this, look at this, one, two, three, you know, there's a chance of it moving up. Uh, one, two, three, moving up. You know, uh, three attempts, one, two, three, moving down. One, two, three, and this one's four, moving down. Okay, so anyway, this right here, it would be nice to be a green pin bar, but it is a red pin bar. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. So the fact is we had a magnet to the downside, and we had one, two, three attempts at it, and then the buyer stepped in. Okay, and this is just a key of patience. Patience, patience, patience. Has been um, some of the people have been patient for oh, what two months now, waiting for the entry, and then they got in at this level and drove that price hard. Okay, again, ignore this um, bar. This is my broker that's got in correct data in, but um, on the four hour, you can see we do have an inside ba inside bar here. Okay, it's at the moment it's a V reversal. I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback or even consolidation, and then I move the upside. Now bear in mind, we've got gap, gap, I think there is another gap somewhere up here, there's another gap up there. Um, where do we have another one? I'm sure we have another one somewhere. There it is there. Okay. And there's another one up there, so that's uh, that one's closed. Okay, so we've got four gaps to the upside now. So that's four very strong magnets to the upside. Okay, so I'm still in two minds on the DAX. So bear in mind, uh, this. Let's just get rid of this trend line we've got already. So this consolidation that we had, which has broken, is fairly significant. However, what is happening like that. Okay, so the uh, reason why I'm just drawing this in for you is to show you. So we sort of, this level will coincide with multiple levels across time so it'll be parallel lines from somewhere along the lines so it'll be a trend line and somewhere in the past um, sort of a downward trend line that is corresponding to okay so um, yeah, I'll do a video on that sometime but it's, it's quite a an interesting fact that all trend lines across all time frames uh, typically are like channels okay so I wish I could copy that to show you but um, this will give you the idea okay so you can see how price uses it here uses it underneath here then bouncing off it bouncing off it bouncing off it right so yes we do have a head and shoulders bear in mind I'm on the weekly now okay 
Oh, yes, we do have this head and shoulders. However, we also have a fairly strong channel that is formed on the weekly. This could be seen as an exhaustion bar onto a level. Okay, now bear in mind what I said. We had a gap. You don't see it on the weekly here. But we definitely had a gap here. It was a daily gap. And that was a magnet. And you can see from this weekly close here. So if I just use my cursor, you'll see. Look to the left here. You can see it was just short of the daily gap. The daily gap is this bottom red line. That was short of the daily gap. And there was no other, there's nothing else to, to stop it. There's no other resistance line or support line. So it basically turned on this trend line. Okay. So it turned on the trend line, rallied off it, came back, and we thought, okay, double bottom here. Maybe it's a range. And uh, didn't really pay attention. Well, I'm talking about myself now. I didn't really pay attention to a daily gap. And one time, second time, third time, lucky. So anyway. Can't get it right all the time, but um, it does help to be to get emotion out of your trading and uh, look at the facts in front of you. Right. So um, at this stage, this is looking like a turn. Okay, it's come off a level, significant level. It's given me an inside bar. The daily has given me a bit of a pin bar, and also. It, this is a wise man number one okay so if I just get rid of the noise and again those that are not familiar with the wise man number one where we broke through the alligator which is there draw your trend line along price and at the same time from the same point to where the red part of the alligator the teeth crosses over so kind of in that area there you can see well, you could actually just kind of do this. Okay, so from the top of price onto the alligator, we can see that our version's price. All you're looking for is to see where the price is far away from the alligator. Okay, the further it is away from the alligator, the more of the, of the diversions, the more likely that that is a wise man number one. How do you trade a wise man number one? Well, on the daily, you're waiting for a daily close above this level here, which is uh, 11.083. Once you get a daily close above that, that is your entry and your stop would be below the tail, okay? On the daily, that's quite, uh, that's gonna be quite a massive um, wise man number one, so maybe not really what you wanna do. Okay, this is sort of a wise man number one, not entirely true. It is my second signal. There was my first one. There's my second one. However, look at the oscillator. So I would expect this. Come back, consolidate. Bear in mind, non-farm payrolls today. So I wouldn't expect too much action. Probably still trending to the downside. Come and test this low or go sideways. Or it could rally a bit and then come off. So rally for the first hour of trading and then settle. Anyway, it's not something that I want to trade uh, until non-farm payrolls is in. Okay, so that's kind of uh, my view at the moment. We have come off a significant level. So I'd like to see a second signal on the four hour. That would give me some confidence that we are moving to the upside. Okay, and the reality is we've got some big, big gaps to the top. So... We, wherever we get in, we do have a good 600 point trade. Okay, not as good as the, the Dow where we can do that in one day at the moment, but um, a nice calm 600 points over a week wouldn't be too bad. Okay, so, and I think the last thing we want to do is just have a look on the lower time frame. So right now the trend is still down. Okay, you can see we're still below the alligator. So we moved into the alligator here. But we'll need to break through um, so this fractional break here on the half hour is valid okay um, there is a nice signal beautiful engulfing signal bar and we do have one two three 
and we've started the alligator started going up. Only concern I've got is regrouping the upside again. Okay, so what I see at the moment is another wedge. Okay, or channel, should we say? So we do have a channel. I'm really, I, I, I do suspect, and even if I move this down to there, probably give you a better picture. So it's more than a, a channel, it's a wedge. And the target for the wedge is another uh, is to come and test the low here. So in other words, a double bottom. And that is what I'm looking for. If we get a double bottom here today um, on a 30 minute or an hour, it'll also equate to a double bottom on the four hour. That is well worth taking. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I want to do is just, I just want to pop across to the Bollinger on this because the Bollinger is going to tell me Uh, it's going to be a bit of a mess, isn't it, because of that. Um, okay, so looking at the hour, you can see outside Bollinger, and we've got a pattern inside the Bollinger. Oscillators are grouped to the downside, so we're looking for a potential turn. But I have a feeling we're going to come back for a, a double bottom. Okay. And that to me would be ideal. So come back, form a double bottom here, and then we look for an entry. And you can take it off the, I would take it off the 12 minute to be actual, the 15 minute. So, so a lot of resistance here. So let it move to the downside. I'm not sure I would chase that short. Okay, so definitely not going to chase that short, but I definitely would be looking for a long entry uh, pullback either onto the uh, the alligator here, you can see how we're in the alligator and now the alligator is pointing to the upside. So even a, a retest to come and test this alligator, hold that, because look at this, if we come back onto the alligator here, you have a 50 point, 60 point stop loss. Worst case scenario. So if you can see a pullback and then you get some kind of um, bullish action, in other words, another pin bar or an engulfing bar like this, it'll be well worth putting a trade in and leaving it for a 60 point stop loss. I mean, even if it's a small trade, it's not going to break the bank, but it could very well be a setup for a bigger trade. Okay. So that's kind of the way I'm looking at the DAX at the moment. Going to be paying very close attention to this because my risk to reward on this trade would be immense. Okay. And I think the last thing I want to do is just head across to the monthly. I want to highlight something here. So that gap close was also a fairly significant monthly level. See, one, two, three, four monthly tails sitting up there. Okay, and we've now tagged it. Monthly oscillator here is well within the buy zone at the moment. Yes, we have broken through the alligator. So let's just be very clear about that. We have broken through the alligator. So I would expect as the minimum, looking at the monthly, is a retest of the alligator. And that in itself is a thousand points. Okay. The other thing that I would also expect would be a retest of this neckline for the head and shoulders. Okay, so that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm not looking to get beyond sort of 11, 7, 30 best case scenario. If we, well, sorry, best case scenario will be up there, which will equate to 11, 8, 70. So 11, 8, 70 is kind of what I'm looking for. And then I want to wait and see what happens. But I still believe you know, that we have two possible scenarios here. Okay, and the, the one is the head and shoulders, which got the neckline, there's a the neckline, but the other one is that, which is a consolidation pattern. Okay, 
And then the last thing that we need to take a look at is put your Fibonacci on. I'm going to take it from this level because here you had a rally and a pullback, which was a fairly deep pullback. So I'm going to take this like that. And you can see we're on the 61.8 as well. Okay, so all I'm saying is you have channel traders that are going to be buying off the bottom of the channel. You're going to have uh, Fibonacci traders in 61.8 that are buying off here. And then what you're going to have is you're also going to have uh, Ichimoku traders who are going to be buying off the monthly cloud as well. So they'd be looking to get an entry here and they'd have stopped below the cloud. Okay, weekly Ichimoku traders would be trading short, but I'm referring to long-term traders at the moment, um, large institutions, pension funds, that, the likes. Okay, so that's kind of the, the view. And then obviously the other thing that you need to bear in mind is I don't have um, stochastics or anything, but if you look at the stochastics and RSIs and things like that, on the monthly, they're all going to be grouped to the bottom in the buy zone, MACD, etc., etc. So they're all going to be indicating it's time to buy on the monthly. Okay, so that's kind of my view of the land at the moment. I'm looking for, it would be nice to have a double bottom on this level, on a sort of an hour or a four hour level, and that would give me confidence to get in long. Okay. And just before I shut down, let's just have a, a quick look with the futures it's doing. Probably flat, but uh, 0.22 down, so 10,900 at the moment. So ever so slightly down. Yeah, around there. So pretty close where they're closed. But this little warning bell here is telling me we're having another move down. But um, based on the significance of the level we're at, I think it's just going to be a retest, more than likely a double bottom. And uh, I'm definitely looking for a long back at the bottom here. Okay. So anyway, guys, that's my view of the DAX today. Just remember, keep those stops really tight because if something does go wrong with non-farm payrolls, we will fly through this level at the bottom here um, with no resistance. Okay. So just keep those stops tight or alternatively just wait for non-farm and trade after the non-farm payrolls. Anyway guys, enjoy the weekend and I'll catch you later. Cheers for now.